In order for a computer to communicate on a network, it must have a network interface card inside it. All you will normally see on a desktop computer is a port on the back, which you can plug a network cable into. It's the network interface card that transmits and receives the electrical signals, which represent the data being communicated. Another name for a network interface card is a network adapter. Every network interface card has a unique number, known as its MAC address. Networked devices uniquely identify each other on a LAN by means of their MAC addresses. In fact, any device that can be connected to a network, such as a PC, a tablet or a smartphone, has to have a network card with a unique MAC address. MAC stands for Media Access Control. The MAC address is a 48-bit number written as 12 hexadecimal digits. It's hard-coded onto the network card by the manufacturer, so it can't be changed. In fact, the first six digits of the MAC address identify the manufacturer. Makers of network interface cards have to agree among themselves upon standards to ensure that no two network interface cards have the same MAC address. Wireless network interface cards can send and receive data using radio signals instead of cables. These radio signals are relayed between computers via wireless access points, also known as hotspots. In a home, a wireless access point usually does the job of an internet router as well. Wireless networks are known as Wi-Fi networks. Wi-Fi stands for wireless fidelity. There are lots of different versions of Wi-Fi that work at different speeds in different radio frequency bands. The type of Wi-Fi depends on the type of wireless network interface card and the type of wireless access point. The Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers specified a standard for wireless communications to help ensure that one manufacturer's hardware and software will always work with another's. This standard has evolved over the years, but one of the most commonly used versions is the 802.11ac standard, which is also known as Gigabit Wi-Fi. This operates at speeds of up to 1.3 gigabits per second in the 5 gigahertz radio frequency band. The range of a wireless network interface card is somewhere between 20 and 50 meters, depending on the number of obstacles in the way, such as buildings or hills. In perfect conditions, a Wi-Fi signal might travel as far as 300 meters. That's a mile. There are now more Wi-Fi devices in use than there are people on Earth, and more than half of the Internet's traffic travels through Wi-Fi networks. Wi-Fi networks not only use computers, but they also include smartphones, printers, games consoles, smart TVs and lots of other devices, each of which needs to have some sort of wireless network interface card inside it, and each with a unique MAC address. A Wi-Fi network is more difficult to secure than a cabled network because radio signals are broadcast on the air, so to speak. It's therefore essential that data on a Wi-Fi network is encrypted, so it can't be understood if it's hacked. In fact, if you don't set up your home's internet router with an encryption key, you're practically inviting the neighbours to steal your expensive bandwidth. Encryption and decryption of Wi-Fi data is the job of the software on the computing device, not the wireless network interface card. Many networks still use wires to connect computers together. These are usually made of copper metal with a plastic coating because copper is an excellent conductor of electricity. UTP cable is the most commonly used type of cable in local area networks. UTP stands for Unshielded Twisted Pair. A UTP cable is made up of eight colour-coded wires which are twisted together into four pairs. Twisting the wires together like this cuts down on electromagnetic interference. On a typical LAN, a computer will use one pair to transmit data and the other pair to receive data. The other two pairs are therefore future-proofing, in case some type of network in the future needs them. In fact, some systems use these extra wires to carry electrical power 
alongside the data. There are various categories of UTP cable with different characteristics and speeds. Category 6, otherwise known as CAT6, is relatively inexpensive and can carry up to 10 gigabits per second on a cable as long as 50 metres. The best copper cables can carry up to 100 gigabits per second. Wired networks are considerably faster than wireless ones and less prone to attack by hackers. Networks that use fibre optic cable are becoming more and more common. Fibre optic cables are often used in the backbones of local area networks. A fibre optic cable might contain one or more thin strands of glass, each with a plastic coating. There are usually several extra layers of protective sheathing as well, depending on where they're going to be used. To use a fibre optic cable, you need a specially designed network interface card. This has a small laser or a powerful light emitting diode inside it, which converts electronic data from the computer into pulses of light so they can be transmitted. The fibre optic network interface card also has a light detector inside it, so that it can receive light signals and convert them back into electronic data. The light is transmitted inside a strand of glass using a physical principle known as total internal reflection. In other words, the light bounces off the internal walls of the cable as it travels. This allows fibre optic cable to be bent and twisted, just like copper cable, and it'll still work. In fact, if it's thick enough, a single glass strand can transmit several beams of light at the same time, as long as those beams have slightly different frequencies. This is called multi-mode fibre optic cable. Fibre optic cables have lots of advantages over copper. They're more reliable and the signal quality is much better because they're not vulnerable to electromagnetic interference. And there's no crosstalk between glass fibres if there's more than one inside a cable. There's also less attenuation. Light data can travel ten times further than electrical data before it needs amplifying. This makes fibre optic networks simpler and cheaper to operate. Fibre optic networks are also more difficult to hack. Perhaps the single biggest advantage of fibre optic cable over copper cable is the higher bandwidth. A fibre optic cable can carry much more data than a copper cable of the same diameter. Some fibre optic cables can carry up to 100 terabits of data per second. Repeaters, switches and routers are types of connecting boxes, but they can do more than just simplify wiring. They can amplify signals on long stretches of cable. They allow you to construct large segmented local area networks. Switches and routers filter network traffic, meaning better performance. And a gateway can connect a network to a completely different type of network. Gateways are often used to connect LANs to the internet. To summarise then, every networked computer needs a network interface card. Every network interface card has a unique MAC address. Networks can be wired or wireless. Wide networks use copper or fibre optic cable. Repeaters, switches and routers amplify signals on the network. Switches and routers filter the traffic on a segmented network, helping to improve performance. And a gateway provides LAN users with access to the internet. <laughs>